Hi everyone, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AlumniTutors.com and in this video we're going to be looking at Proton NMR. Now this video is just going to look at a very um, simple overview of Proton NMR um, and there's going to be no mention of splitting in this video uh, or spin-spin coupling reactions. Um, so if it's that uh, aspect that you'd like to look at in terms of Proton NMR, then you just click on the link below and you can see that video there. Um, like I say, we're just going to keep this one relatively simple. So what we've got is we are effectively going to look at two molecules um, and we're going to assign uh, the different hydrogen environments to NMR spectra. We're also going to look at what we mean by peaks, chemical shift, integration as well. Uh, we're also going to look at the solvents that we use and you may have heard of the Harlem shake. Well, in chemistry, we've got the D2O shake. So we're going to have a look at some of that as well. So if we just start off with uh, our two different molecules here. Now, we're looking at proton NMR, so as opposed to carbon-13 NMR, where we're looking for carbon environments, and this one, we're looking for proton environments instead. So we're looking at the hydrogens in the molecule, and the principle is the same, though. It's exactly the same as carbon-13. So we've got a few uh, points that I want to uh, make you aware of here, um, and this is about the number of peaks in an NMR spectrum. Basically, the number of them tell us how many hydrogen environments we have, and I'm going to work through and show you what, how we can assign these peaks as well. Uh, we're also going to look at something called chemical shift, um, and again, just like carbon-13 NMR, if you've done that, um, this tells us the um, the type of an hy hydrogen, what, what environment the hydrogen's in, so for example, if it's bonded next to an oxygen or a nitrogen, etc., so, uh, and you'll get a table in your exam as well that will show you um, the uh, chemical shifts for different functional groups in a molecule as well. So, um, be useful if you have that to hand, uh, and then you can see how it relates to my spectrum on here. And also integration as well. So, you'll see this quite a lot, especially in proton NMR. Uh, and integration tells us how many hydrogens we have in that environment. And again, I'll, I'll go through each three of them as well when we go through these examples here. Now, as we go through these, basically, I'm just going to show you a molecule, and I'm going to assign it to the peak. In reality, you're more likely to get in the exam is a, a spectra or a set of data, and you're expected to identify the molecule from that. So we call that interpreting spectra. So there is going to be videos on there, there's a load of videos on there, sorry, um, that um, uh, show you how to interpret the spectra and piece together a molecule. And for this purpose, like I say, it's going to be introductory to make sure that you understand it first. So we're going to start with this one here. So this is methanol, uh, and we're going to look for the um, environments first. So um, we're going to do this in uh, a different color to show. We've got the spectra here, and I've got the numbers. You can see the numbers show us the integration. You'll see that sometimes you might see it as like an S shape. Uh, on the actual um, NMR spectra, and you'll see a number above it, and that number tells us the integration, or in other words, how many hydrogens are in that environment, so that can help us out quite a lot. Obviously, you can see here, it's more simple for this than it is for this one over here, but if we have a look, we'll try and identify our environments first. You can see we've got two peaks, so this tells us that we have two environments, obviously, in this molecule, so you can see that we've got a proton here, this is one environment, uh, and a proton that's bonded to an oxygen directly, for example, in an OH, uh, has its own environment. Um, and so this one has just got a value of one. There's one hydrogen in that environment, obviously, because it's just that on its own. Um, and if we look at our chemical shift, if we look at our table, um, you will see that the OH group uh, should come at about just over 4 ppm, which is the shift pattern. So we know that for definite, this proton is causing this peak down here, which has got an integration of one. Uh, and you can see we've also got three other hydrogens that are left. Now these hydrogens are all bonded to the same carbon. So we say that in NMR terms, they're in the same environment. So I'm going to go through these in a different color. We're going to use them in green. Uh, so if I circle these hydrogens here, these ones are all in the same environment. So NMR sees them as one peak, because that's the environment that we've got. So they're all bonded to the same carbon. Uh, we have a chemical shift. So if we look on our, uh, on our table um, for NMR data, then we can see that this one should come out around about the three mark, or just above three. 
Um, so this tells us we have a CH3, and also it's the only peak that's left in this molecule. So these hydrogens cause this peak here with an integration of three, which tells us that we have three N hydrogens in this environment. That's what the integration tells us. Okay, so let's look at a bit more of a, a bit more complex uh, example where we've got a few more peaks. We've got this molecule here. Again, there's a few, there's a bit of symmetry here, and we've still got an alcohol in there as well. So you can have a look at the molecule. The first thing we'll do is we've got a hydrogen there. So straight away we're looking for one peak. And we'll do this one in green. So we're looking for something with an integration of one, because there's no other hydrogens on there that are on the own. So this is the only peak that's got an integration of one. It's shifted quite high up as well, which tells us that this hydrogen is bonded to something quite electronegative. So this, for example, this is the oxygen. So I'm just going to draw it over down there. And there we go. That's that peak there. And then if we look at our next hydrogens, let's look at the next one along. Uh, we can see we've got a CH2 here. So we're looking for something with an integration of two. Now the problem is we've got two peaks with an integration of two here. Um, so, and this is because we've got this one and we've got this CH2 here. So what we have to do is we have to look at this. And you can see that this CH2 is closest to the oxygen compared to this CH2. Now, any hydrogens which are close to something electronegative, like an oxygen, will have a higher shift, uh, what we call a chemical shift, than something that is further away. So we can say that these hydrogens here were probably caused by, well, well, will give us that peak there, because this is the integration of two peak, which is shifted furthest up. And if we look on to the next one, so we'll do this one in blue, so these bunch of hydrogens here, these ones would represent this peak here, which is the one slightly shifted. They're very close to each other, but it's not shifted as much because it's slightly further away from that oxygen. Integration of two, because we've got two hydrogens. Now, you can see we've only got one more peak left, and this is an integration of nine. So what this is telling us is that we have nine hydrogen environments, uh, sorry, nine hydrogens in one environment. So to get that, you really need um, a lot of hydrogens bonded to um, carbons, which are bonded to the same carbon. So if we have a look here, so we'll do this one in purple. And you can see we've got a carbon here. This carbon doesn't have any protons on it, so this won't be detected by the NMR machine. But if you look what's coming from it, we've got three CH3 groups, and they're all bonded to the same carbon. So NMR sees that as the same environment. It's just one environment. But effectively, we've got three hydrogens there, three hydrogens there, and three hydrogens there. That's a total of nine hydrogens. So if I put a loop around all of these, just like that, you can see that we've got nine hydrogens there, and obviously this has got to be because of this large peak here. Uh, you can see that this one is a lot further away from the oxygen, so therefore isn't shifted as far. Um, so therefore it appears at about the three mark, roughly. And you can see, again, um, we have a, a peak at zero. This is because of tetramethylsilane. If you're not sure uh, on what uh, tetramethylsilane is, um, there is a video on carbon-13 that you can look at. So just click on the link below and you can find out uh, what TMS is and, uh, and why it's used. Okay, just the last things really, um, is when you dissolve in these, some of these, if you have a solid, for example, a solid organic compound, you can't put a solid organic compound into an NMR machine. It has to be dissolved in a solvent to make it into a solution. And so what we have to do is we have to use a solvent that obviously doesn't contain any hydrogens in it. Because if the solvent, for example, water, if we dissolved it in water, it has hydrogens in, the NMR machine, the proton NMR machine, would pick up the protons in the water, and you'd get peaks for that as well, which would uh, give you um, extra peaks which are not directly linked with the molecule that you want to know about. So what we have to do is we mix it with a um, something called a, a deuterium, which is just an isotope of hydrogen, um, and it's basically an even-numbered nuclei, so therefore the NMR machine will not pick up because it has an even-numbered nuclear um, even, even number nuclei in it. So uh, we use deuterated solvents instead. So something like you might use D2O, for example, instead of H2O. Um, and because it's got even numbers, again, it doesn't pick it up uh, in the NMR machine. You can use like CCL4. Again, um, this 
is effectively is polar, so it means it will um, it will allow something to dissolve. Um, but you can see there's no hydrogens in there, so that's fine. Uh, that's a good solvent to use for proton NMR. And the last one, uh, like I say, in chemistry we've got something called a D2O shake, um, and this is useful for when we want to detect NH or OH groups in our molecule. And effectively, if we take our molecules, so say for example, if we take um, this molecule here, which is methanol, and if we mix in some D2O, um, which is also known as heavy water, because it's got deuterium, D stands for deuterium, which is just an isotope, heavier isotope of hydrogen. If we mix it with this, effectively, we get something called a proton exchange. And this proton will drop off, and it will exchange for deuterium on there. And because deuterium is an even-numbered nuclei, uh, the NMR machine will not detect it. Uh, and crucially, because the NMR machine will detect it, because we've swapped the hydrogen for a deuterium, then this peak will disappear. So if we run the spectra without the D2O, just this, we should see this peak here. And then if we mix the D2O with this and then run it through the NMR machine again, this peak should disappear. And if it does, that's proof that we've either got an OH group or an NH group. And that's something to look out for as well in your NMR spectra. And um, just something worth noting as well. But um, that's it. Hope it helps. Bye.